The date is Saturday, February 9th, 2019. Done a lot of radio interviews in my life. Some of them are more special than others. Tonight is a very special one, although we've, Art, we've talked before, but I really wanted to slow down for a second because you're always on the run. I'm always on the run. It's usually a quick call before a concert. But, uh, but I told your people, I said, no, I, I'd like some time with Art uh, in between acts tonight at the show. The, f the first thing that I wanted to just say, the comment is, how was time going so fast? It seemed like we first met each other about 20 years ago in Tucson, Arizona. Where's the time going? Does it, how does it feel to you? Do, is it true as we get older, the time goes quicker and quicker and quicker? Well, that's what some people say. My doctor says, uh, don't worry about it. Age is only a number. And just enjoy yourself. It's just a number, yeah. Awesome. So we are enjoying ourselves. I think so, our dub doing the things we both love most, and that is radio. And we're here tonight sharing one of those big moments. Absolutely. Um, I would, I'd like to ask you some questions that maybe not everybody asks you because, well, there's some really good stories. Um, and there's some things that maybe people don't know about. Um, first, a story that I heard on Friday at your tribute luncheon in Los Angeles that I, I had never heard before, and I, I just I would like you to share it with my audience because I think it bears repeating. I've been telling this exact story to everybody at work over the past week because I thought it was so interesting. You are a young man in San Francisco, and how old were you in 1943, the very first time that you walked into the very first radio station? You were how old? I had just turned 18 a month earlier. 18 years old. The year is 1943. The call letters, was that KSAN? Yes. And you That's had... AM. There was no such thing as FM. Never heard of FM. No. You didn't have Never heard of it. And it was uh, in San Francisco at the top of the merchandise mart. Well, you, you walked in and you said, can I have a job? And what did the program director tell you? He was kind of rude at first, right? Yeah. Well, in this case here, uh, there was no program director on duty. It was only the general manager and his secretary. I asked for a job. He said, no. He says, you're too young, your voice is too scrawny. Uh, he says, and besides, how'd you get in here? <laughs> he says, I'm a busy man. I said, okay, I'm sorry, sir. He says, and, and I started out the door, and he said, hey, you, wait a minute. He says, uh, listen, uh, he says, if you want to get a job in this business, he says, you have to have an FCC license. On this station, you have to be a combo man. You have to be an engineer and an announcer, and you probably don't qualify for either one. So I'm a busy man now. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. He said, well, just let me give you a piece of advice. You need to have a first-class radio telephone license to be an engineer at this station. I said, you mean one of these? And I pulled out three licenses. One was a ham license. One was a telegraph license where I could work on any boat as a telegrapher, and the third was a first-class radio telephone license, which you need if you want to uh, be on a station like KSAN. He got up out of his chair, came around, put his arm around me, and he says, you're hired. And I said, but well, I thought you said, he said, no, you're hired. I go, but I, and then my voice went up an octave. <laughs> he says, no, he says, you are hired. I need that license on my wall because I, uh, all my engineers have been drafted. Remember, World War II is full, in the full swing. It's just a month after, you know, uh, 1943. Uh, September 21st was that first day. So that's how I got my first radio job. Not by being an announcer, but by being an engineer. And, and a necessity, because he needed that license, and you got it. Yeah, and I still have it. <laughs> I, 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 I think, imagine if he wouldn't have hollered at you right when you were leaving to say, hey, by the way, you need a license. Him saying that one thing, that one thing, him, honestly, I think, being kind of a, a smart aleck, a smart ass, being rude, hey, you need a license, by the way, kid. And then you turning around and saying, oh, one of these. I mean, <laughs> that one moment changed history. I mean, who knows? Things could have been completely different. It's been fantastic working with you all these years. Well, I hope we have many more. Uh, it was great tonight, and it's, we'll have many more. I love your town, San Diego. And, uh, well, we'll be seeing these people again. And we'll be doing a lot more radio together, r -Dub. This interview is to be continued before, last question, your favorite car in the whole world. What's your favorite car? 
Jaguar. The Jaguar. And right. I have one. <laughs> there it is. You see a Jaguar cruising around the streets of Hollywood and Palm Springs and San Diego. That's our little Let's go on stage and finish out the show. Yeah. Thank you, Art. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. I love working with you. I love working with you as well.